Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, it's Saturday today and I was trying to decide uh, what sort of video to do and I thought we might look at another uh, of these unusual Japanese pencil puzzles um, that we haven't covered before and this one is called Snake Pit. Now, Snake Pit comes in a few guises but we're going to look at the sort of simplest variation of the puzzle today um, and I found a couple of examples on the internet so let's talk about the rules of how this puzzle works. And the idea is that we need to divide the grid along the boundary line so that every snake, or every cell I should say, belongs to a snake. Uh, and a snake is basically a one cell wide path um, which needs to be at least two cells long and it must not touch itself even diagonally. So it must sort of look like a snake. So just to look at this grid here, um, you know, if we were to extend this seven in two directions you can see that these sevens form a contiguous region here but it doesn't look anything like a snake so that's not allowed the snake must be exactly one cell wide and that's very important um, the numbered cells um, obviously must be part of a snake uh, the, the, well they must be part of a snake that's exactly the length of that number of cells uh, so these sevens here have to be part of a snake that is seven long the fours have to be stuck part of a snake that's four cells long uh, and a snake can contain, um, you know, it can contain one number, multiple identical numbers, or no numbers at all. So it's perfectly possible for there to be a snake of length, you know, five uh, along these five cells here. That's completely allowed. Um, now the final rule, and it's very important, is that uh, two snakes of the same length can never touch each other. Uh, in an orthogonal direction, i.e. horizontally or vertically. Uh, they can touch each other at an edge. So if, for example, uh, we looked at what's a good way of doing it, if we discovered that this was a three, then these three squares are orthogonally connected, they would form one snake. It would be possible for there to be another snake like this in this direction. That is allowed. Um, but what, could, what wouldn't be allowed is another snake that sort of went in these three squares, that's not allowed. So the first puzzle we're going to do, I think, is uh, shouldn't be terribly difficult. Um, but if you want to try it, please go to uh, please click on the link under the under the channel. We're going to do two of these today. One of them much harder than the other one, but the one that's harder has a little trick that I think you'll enjoy. So how do we go about doing this? Well, the first thing. Where would I start with this puzzle? Well, the place I would start would be the corners. And I would like to think about the corners. Now, obviously, we know that each snake from the rules has to be two cells long. So this clearly has to be a seven. Um, now, once this is a seven, we start to get a, a handle on the shape of our snake. Because we can't put a seven into this square. Because if we do, our snake is not one cell wide. It's two cells wide in these two positions. So this is not a 7, so there's going to have to be a 7 in this square. So we've now got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you can see that this 7 here is also going to have to be part of our snake. So we could actually use some highlighting here to, um, to show what's going on. I think we could do this and this and this. So we know this is all part of one snake. Now, what could we do next? Well, I guess we could label, we know these twos are all, all part of the snake. And actually the highlighting in our software means this is quite easy to, to use. Um, and because we know that uh, uh, cells uh, or snakes of the same length can't touch, using a single color to indicate all of the twos actually works quite nicely and we might as well use a different color for the threes look let's use green for the threes there you can see they must form a snake um, and we can do a little trick with these twos because obviously knowing that snakes of length two cannot touch I can't put a two in this square but uh, oops. if I do put a two in this square then however I divide these up these these snakes are touching one another. So, in fact, there must be a two there, and there must be a two there, which is also a little deduction that uh, comes up from time to time in these puzzles. Now let's look at these fours. How are these fours gonna develop? 
It's got to come out this way. Oh, sorry, Alexa. Alexa wants to talk to us. Um, so while she's talking, I shall be quiet. I know my place. Um, so you can see again, this is forced. This three has to come out one. Now we have to think very carefully about this six. We need this six not to be two cells wide. So how are we going to do that? Well, there's only one way. It's going to have to come round in a sort of L shape. Um, so we're going to have to go six, six, six like that. And then we can put the three in the middle. And this will all now look reasonably, uh, reasonably good, I think. I'll use orange for, well, I'm not sure if it's orange. I'm going to get accusations of color blindness again, but I'll, um, I'll, go with, I'll go with yellow for sixes. So we've made a little bit of progress. We've done the bottom right. Um, and now we have to think about some of the other extremities. I think this, this square here, obviously, it needs to be a seven. Um, that means this must be a seven. This six has got to go somewhere, so let's extend it out. And now we have to think about how this six is going to move. If the six goes upwards to any extent, it's going to cut off these fours. And these fours still need two more fours in order to make a, a snake of length four. So this six can go a maximum of one upwards before it cuts the four. Now, it still therefore needs to go a minimum of three downwards from this square. So we, it's going to have to do that. And once it does that, it hits this square. So in fact, we're able to complete the six by noticing the way it must develop. And that in turn forces the sevens and gives us a set another seven um, snake like that. Now, what could we do next? Well, if this is a four, we can't make our, these fours work. Let me show you what I mean. If that's a four, we need the snake to be of length four, so we're going to have to put another four there. That breaks for two reasons. Firstly, our snake is not one cell wide. Secondly, however we divide these fours up, they're connected to another four snake. That's clearly not allowed. So this square here cannot be um, a four. So what are the options for this square then? Well, it's, got, it's going to have to be the seven. We can't put another snake in here without cutting off the four. So this is a seven. That completes our seven, and that must be a four to complete our four. This three is forced out, which completes the threes. And you may be able to see, sometimes if you get good at these, you can do them very quickly. I dare say there will be some people uh, watching the video who are... Um, almost able to do these puzzles in their head uh, and if you are uh, sort of of a Raymond um, Babbitt disposition then these puzzles will be trivial for you well, maybe the next one we're going to look at might be more interesting so let's have a look here How's, how, how is this going to work now again for similar reasons to the pattern we had up here I can't make this square a 4 so this square is going to have to be a 4. Now once this square is a 4, this square is forced to be a 4 because it can't be a, a snake of length 1. Let's put a 4 in there. Now these two squares are not connected to anything yet. But with this 3, we, we save ourselves. That's going to have to look like this. And again, we're making reasonable progress around the grid. Let's fill these 3s in like that. And finally, with, we looked at this four. This four must extend out. Now, if it extends out one more, it's going to cut off the six. So it cannot do that. It must come down one. This six needs to get out somehow. So that's going to have to come down like this. Now, how could we do this now? Uh, let's think about this just for a moment. If this four comes down one more, it's going to hit this other four, this other snake of length four. So this cannot be part of the four therefore it must be six that must be four and you might if you're not careful think that the puzzle is solved 
I might look at the central area and say, uh, OK, well, I can just fill in a snake of length 9, can't I? Well, of course you can't do that, because if you were to put a snake of length 9 in here, the snake would be 3 cells wide. So my phone is going, I can just check what's going on there. Um, okay. um, so we, we can't do that. We're going to have to divide this central 3 by 3 up somehow in a way which um, doesn't breach the rules of the puzzle. Now, this is where it gets slightly interesting. Because how could we do that? Bearing in mind we mustn't hit snakes of other, you know, of the same length. So obviously we can't put a snake of length eight in, 8 in, because we can't have a snake of length 1. If we were to try and put a snake of length 7 in, we could do that. Uh, if, if it was to sort of go up like this and down. But you can see that there's a 7 snake here and a 7 snake here. And it's impossible to create a snake of length seven, which is going, obviously it's going to have to use. It's going to, it's going to be a sort of end shape. That's it. Uh, oh, actually, I don't like doing it. I don't want to do it like that. Oh. If there was, I'll do it like this. If there was a snake of length seven, it's going to have to look something like that, and a rotation thereof. So that's never going to be possible, given that we have seven here and seven here. However, I arrange that shape. Uh, even if I rotate it as much as I like, I'll never not be able to hit one of these sevens. So that doesn't work. What about sixes? How could I make a snake of length six in here without hitting this square, without hitting this square? Well, we could play around for a while and try and do it. Um, but you can see, hopefully, it's not going to work. That's not possible either. What about fives? Or well, fives look more interesting because there are no fives in the grid yet. But the problem with fives is we either therefore have to have, well, firstly we have to have a snake of length five. What could that look like? Well, it could look like that or a rotation thereof. But that was that's going to give us a problem. We're either going to have two snakes of length two that touch one another or a snake of length four that is two cells wide. So this arrangement of fives doesn't work. What, how else could we do this then? Um, could we have something like that? Well, yes, we could. But how are we going to put this shape in, or a rotation thereof, in such a way that we don't hit a 2? You can see if I was to try this pattern here, this 2 is going to be breached once I put a snake of length 2 in. And if I rotate this or reflect it, I'm always having a problem with the twos. There is no way to do this. So bizarrely enough, we must be looking for something with a length of four as its maximum length. Now, once we think about that for a moment, we can't have another snake of length four within the nine cells because that would leave the third snake as being only one cell long. So we must be looking at four three and two as the length of the snakes involved and then we've got to be really careful because obviously we have fours threes and two length snakes all around the perimeter of this area so how would we do this so it looks like it's going to start like that maybe that works, doesn't it? Because now I can put my three snake here, I think, like that, and that's a two snake, and that's not hitting anything. So that is how to solve the basic, or one of the basic iterations. Let's just check it. If we colour it in, it's a good way to tell whether or not we've actually done it properly. And the twos were purple. Weren't they? That looks right to me. So that's a good way to check that we've done it right, to use the colours and just scan back and see whether anything's hitting each other orthogonally, which it isn't. OK, brief hiatus there. Um, but now I'm back and I want to take a look at the second puzzle. Now this is more difficult. Um, and I did this earlier in the coffee shop. And I think the only reason I was able to solve it is that I have a little bit of experience with puzzles. And when something appears totally intractable to me, I have a couple of things that I can think about that, that get me unstuck. So take a stare at this. I really recommend you try it. Click on the link under the video 
and see, just play around with it and see if you can make any progress. Um, now I'm going to, big spoiler, so pause now if you don't want the spoiler because I'm now going to talk about how I think you have to solve it. The, the difficulty of course is that there's just so much room here in the grid and given that we don't know whether you know we could have twos and threes and four length snakes there seems to be so much flexibility and how much can you really say about you know this nine for example um, now in the end what I thought about was was to take a step back not think about snakes at all but actually to think about numbers and this is the key to the puzzle um, because what we have to notice is that this is a seven by seven grid now that means there are 49 cells and let's start adding up some of these snakes because we know there are some discrete snakes here that must contribute to the overall total there's an 11 there's at least one 9 so 11 plus 9 is 20 plus 5 plus 4 is 29 plus 6 is 35 but look We've also got some sevens in the grid, and there is no way of connecting these sevens together with one snake. So there's actually two sevens in this grid, and 35 plus two lots of seven, believe it or not, is 49. So in fact, everything we see in the grid is the total number of snakes, in the sense that there was exactly one nine, there are exactly two sevens, there's exactly one six, one eleven, one five, and one four, and we know this for a fact. And this fact allows us to make progress in an efficient way. So now, knowing this, let's see how we might do that. And the first thing I looked at was the nines, as I now know that this nine and this nine connect to one another. So how can they do that? Is it possible, for example, that the nine comes down this way? like this. Now it's pretty clear I think that this can't work. Let's just have a quick look at the maths of this. So if this comes out like this and I try and connect the two to each other. One, two, three, four. So I've got five cells left. I can come across like this but I definitely can't come a further. I can't come down into row four here. They need too many uh, nines. So now how on earth do I fill this 6 and this 7? It's impossible. This 7 can't get out. It'll block the 6 in. So that simple observation allows me to then say, OK, well, I know the 9s connect this way. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. One of these two 9s must be true. That's going to be 8. Now if I extend this 9 in this direction, this 7 then cannot see anything else. You can already see from what I've placed that this 7 is coming round the back here. And one thing that's very important with these snake puzzles is to identify as quickly as possible the head of a snake or the tail of a snake. Now we know that this cell here is a head of a snake. We know this isn't the end of the snake because it's only got a maximum of 8 uh, cells to get here. So in fact, we can extend this one further. Now, we now know that this 7 must connect to this 7, because this 7 cannot reach either this 7 or this 7. And we can just do that by doing this like this. Now, now this, this snake here is exactly the right length. So in fact, we might as well fill in some colors to tell us that. And now this square here, which we haven't filled, it can't be a one-celled snake for the reasons we've discussed. Um, so this is a nine and that completes our nine snake. So let's let's also fill in some colours to tell us our nine snake is full length. Now we have to think a bit harder. So this seven snake must come out one and what could we do now? Well one thing I would be able to say is let's have a look at this five and in particular this corner square. Now either this corner square is a 4 or it's a 5. I don't think it's possible for it to be 11. Let's just confirm that. 1, 2, 3, 
to give enough room it's going to have to come out again it's just not not an 11 it just can't have enough space so if it's a 4 our 5 would have to extend upwards but if it's a 5 the 5 can't continue in this direction otherwise the snake doesn't have you know it's sort of got a kink in the middle so the 5 would have to extend upwards again so we know that the 5 must come that way either because the 4 will force it to or because the snake of the 5 will force it to so we're starting to restrict the 11 now the other tip I have for these puzzles is to consider very carefully corners within the grid this square for example now let's ask ourselves the question, what numbers could this square be? It clearly can't be a 7. It could be an 11. It could be a 6. It can't be a 5 because the 5 can't reach. And it can't be a 4 because the 4 can't reach. So the options here are 11 or 6. Now, if this is an 11, I can't put 11s. I'm going to use 1 to represent 11 because it won't let me type in number 11. Let's think about what happens now. So this is now a 1 and most importantly it's the head of a snake so how on earth do I connect this to this and get this out again because you can see this 11 can't turn here without becoming two, two cells wide so we'd have to somehow go down here and come back in and we're going to the problem is that that way we're going to connect our snake up diagonally which is also going to break it so this square cannot be a 1 it has to be a 6. So what next? Well, we can do another little trick. What about that square? Now that square can't be a 5 because that's going to trap our 11 in. It can't be a 4 for the same reason. So this square is either an 11 or a 6. But look, if this is a 6, that must be true. Now this must be the head of the snake. One, two, three, four. That must be true. And our 11 is, is, is trapped again. So in fact, this square is part of the 11. Now, what does that mean, if anything? I'm sure it means something but we have to work out what it might mean. Um, so now we know one of these two cells is the head of the snake that's six length, that's of length six. And we can see that because the snake cannot come into this area and come out of it. So let's think about whether this square could be if this square is a 6, this is the head of the 6 snake. 1, 2, 3. This must come down. This can't come this way because it'll trap, it'll ruin its snake. So it would have to come that way. 1. This has to come out now. Oops, this is going to break. Look, once we get this in place, this 6 is not yet complete. So now what do we do with this square? This square cannot be 6 and it cannot be 7 because the 7 snake would then have a kink in it. So actually, what we've managed to prove is that this square here is not the head of the 6 snake. Therefore, this square is. So this 6, 6, this must come this way. That means this is a 7. Now this square cannot be part of a 6. Also can't be part of a 7. There wouldn't be enough room can't be 5, can't be 4. So this square is also part of 11. That square was part of 11. I don't know why I deleted it. Um, which means the 6 must come out one further. Now, can this be the head of the 11 snake? No, because that's going to cause a bend in it like that. So this square must continue. This 6 must continue. This 11 needs to get out of its area, so this must be part of the 11. This must be part of the 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now what can this square be? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. No, this square must be 7. 
uh, this 7 is therefore coming down in this direction, it must continue, it can't turn back on itself. This square now has to be a 6 because otherwise, well, there's nothing else it can be, and that completes the 6. It's, I, I do enjoy these puzzles, I think they are fascinating. Um, now the 7, let's use a different colour for the 7, we'll use blue. So, if this square was a 7, the 11 wouldn't be long enough, would it? Because it would go... Ah, no, 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 I've just made a mistake. Look at that. Look at this square. I assumed this came in because it couldn't be part of the 11, but in fact that's not true. I've just spotted that because I was trying to get work out how this 11 would get to the number 11. Now let's just show you. If this is, oh, sorry, um, if this is 6, this 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I mean however, wherever I put this 7, 7, 8, it just cannot get to 11 because it can't turn back on itself. And this is the trick. So this 6 can come down that way. And all of a sudden, look, this allows the 11 to bend. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And that allows us to work out how the puzzle must eventually resolve itself. So and now this is how I'm going to read this. I don't know what colour we should do 11 in, maybe grey. So we just have to resolve the 5 and the 4 now. You can see if this is a 4, that this is broken, the 5 will break because it will be two cells wide. So this must be 5 and therefore we mustn't chop off areas of the grid. So this is going to be the final solution. Um, so something a bit different. I have be very interested to hear whether or not you thought this was an interesting puzzle. It can get very complicated, the snake pit puzzle, because as I say, there can be circles in the grid, there can be shaded areas in the grid, all of which mean things in relation to the snakes. So if you are interested in this and you did enjoy watching, we can certainly, uh, we can certainly do some, uh, some more difficult stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back again soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.